The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the second chapter. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, Herod inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact times when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me words, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, the wise men set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Some of you may know I served my internship here in Cedar Rapids at St. Andrew over on the northeast side of town. Actually, that was the first time I ever met the uh, Patrick and Stephanie Corys. Um, they were visiting there once or twice back then. Um, and uh, that church had a service on Christmas Eve called a crush service. It was at 4 o'clock, and it was especially for the children and the families. And they had a really big nativity scene. I mean, ours is a good size, I think. But um, this was really big. And it was made out of not really plastic, but kind of, um, I don't know, paper mache. It was lightweight. You could pick up the pieces. Um, and it was pretty. It wasn't like the outdoor light up, you know, kind of thing. Um, and so what would happen then is it was one of those services where you alternated the readings and the songs. So you'd read about something and then you'd sing about it and then, you'd, and then the children would come and it was their job then to carry those pieces up the center aisle and then put them you know, on display in front of the church. So um, you can imagine there were some smaller children and some larger pieces. Um, it was fun to watch them awkwardly but still very reverently navigate to that job of carrying Mary or Joseph or a donkey or a sheep all the way up to the front of the church. So of course the last ones to make an appearance were the wise men and they were being directed along by an usher and the children were sent forward but they weren't sent all the way forward they were sent on a detour to go over to what would be the east corner of the sanctuary and place the wise men over there now there was a little bit of confusion about that and they questioned the usher who was sending them in that direction and uh, he said no and and then you could see the conversation going on and he turned and he pointed towards the front of the church now that particular church their banners they have a banner for advent that they layer each week and the final layer has a star at the top of it and so he was pointing toward that banner and toward the star so that the children I'm believing his instruction was then no we place them back here and they look at the star now, if all your friends just had this great grand entrance walking up to the front of the church, um, it's not surprising that you were questioning why your piece got stuck in the back corner. But now they heard and they understood. And I got to witness that really sacred conversation going on between the little children 
asking questions and the adult explaining to them what was happening. But then I saw something even more special happen. After this conversation was going on and the pointing and the star and the explanation, I could see from where I was sitting, one of the boys realized that when he had just kind of unceremoniously set his wise men down because we're at the back of the church, he stopped and he realized that the wise man was facing the wrong direction. And so he went and he turned him so that he could see the star. So the wise men's day has finally come. They have their moment center stage. Um, they've reached their destination and the star that they've been following day after day, mile after mile, has stopped overhead. The star that guided them all along their journey now at last shines down on the place where their journey is made complete. They found the infant king that they were seeking and they worshiped him. They bended down on their knees. They placed their very fancy gifts on his probably not so very fancy dirt floor. And they worshiped him. Have you made a long journey somewhere and then been comforted to arrive at the destination but see that the lights are blazing inside in expectation of your arrival? You come home after a long day in the early dark of winter to find that the person who loves you left the porch light on to light your way when you turn the key in the lock. Last month, I went up to Iwalu for a board of directors meeting, and we have the meetings pretty early on Saturday morning. And, um, well, it's probably not that early, but the time it takes to drive up there for most of the board members driving over an hour, um, you leave pretty early in the morning. And so I went up with a couple of other board members the night before to stay at the Stone Center. And when I pulled into the parking lot, the whole place was lit up. Someone had come and turned on all the lights, and there was a fire in the fireplace. God left the light on for the wise men. They didn't know who God was. They didn't have any expectation of what kind of king Jesus would grow up to be. They didn't know that at the end of this long journey, they would find themselves in the presence of God incarnate. But God left the light on for them. And I imagine if we ask them why in the world they followed that star, traveled so far to worship a baby in a foreign land, they might not be able to offer much of an explanation. I expect maybe they would describe it as a, a feeling, an itch, something tugging them along, something they couldn't refuse or ignore. And perhaps they couldn't name that feeling, but they could see the star. There it was, overhead, its light shining on them, guiding them forward, day and night, mile after mile, the star, a constant companion, beautiful and mysterious and intriguing. And then it stopped. The star stopped over a building in Bethlehem. And when they saw that it had reached its destination, they were overwhelmed with joy. The star had not failed them. They were there. They had made it. And they couldn't know it then, but this destination that they finally reached, it wasn't really the end of their journey, but only the very beginning of everything. Did they even have a moment to wonder why this place or why this child? Or was being there in the presence of Jesus so amazing that they never even doubted for a second why they came? Did they ever reach an understanding of what was happening to them? Or in the end, on that road back home, was it all just kind of a wonderful blur? I don't know if they know that they saw the face of God that day. 
And the gospel verses don't offer us much of that kind of information. And really, the wise men exit the story almost as quickly as they entered it. But we know. We know who they saw. We know whose presence they were in. And we know that at their journey's end, they found the one who was indeed worthy of their gifts and of their worship. And we too follow that same star. And we followed it here today. You followed it here to this place of worship. But where else will the star lead you? Maybe it will lead you to visit the bedside of the sick. Or maybe it will lead you to put some extra groceries in your cart to give to the food bank. Maybe the star will lead you to sign up to serve for an evening for Family Promise next month. Maybe the star will lead you to set aside time each day to read the Bible, to pray together as a family. Maybe the star will lead you to commit to some sort of change in this year ahead. A change that will make this world a better place. Lead you to actively live in patience and kindness. Lead you to listen and understand. Lead you to learn another person's story. Lead you to forgive. God left the light on for the wise men. And God leaves the light on for us. But for us, that feeling, that itch that we have to follow the star, it has a name for us. It's the gift of faith. By grace, we're drawn to and we trust in that light of Christ. And the light of Christ shines forth through those dark nights, through our long journeys. Christ's light is our constant companion, guiding us day after day and mile after mile. Christ's light is beautiful and mysterious and intriguing when we encounter it in the bread and wine of Holy Communion. And Christ's light shines for us in the hearing of the word and here now in the faces of our brothers and sisters as we gather together, just as the wise men did, bringing forth our gifts and worshiping. Christ's light shines in each of you when you're sent forth from this place, proclaiming in your words, but most importantly in your deeds, in your lives, that we leave here by another road, a different road, a road on which we're commanded to love God and love our neighbor all along the way of the journey. Sadly, that can be a road less traveled in our times of division and tribalism. But still, the light of compassion, the light of mercy, points the way. Christ's light tugs on us. It leads us forward into God's love, God's grace, God's forgiveness, God's salvation. And when we get turned around in the wrong direction, when we lose sight of that star, God reaches out for us and turns us back around to face the guiding light the saving light that is Christ Jesus. And so we follow the light. We follow the light and we see the star as it comes to rest over a child in the manger who is Christ, our Emmanuel, God with us. And then we follow the light and we see where the star comes to rest over a broken and dying body that hangs on a cross who is Christ, our Savior. And we follow the light, and we see where the star comes to rest, over an empty tomb, and we know Christ, our Redeemer. Let us pray. Good and loving God, we give you thanks for leaving the light on for us. Give us eyes to see the saving, healing light of Christ in the world around us. 
Grant us the faith to follow that light where it leads. And may our hearts be open to do your work and your will. In the name of Jesus, the light of the world, we pray. Amen.